There are seven continents on our planet. A continent is a large section of land that is separated from other areas of land. Most of the time, they are separated by water. The seven continents are North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica. The country we are studying today is Hungary, and it is found on the European continent. Hungary is a landlocked country in Eastern Europe. Landlocked means that no part of the country borders the ocean or a sea. It does, however, have a large river called the Danube flowing down the middle of it. Hungary has a long history as a European power and was once much larger than it is now. Hungary began around the year 895 when a few tribes or groups of people banded together. This new group of people was known as the Magyars, or the first Hungarians. In order to gain recognition and perhaps maybe a bit more power, they decided to join a large group that was then known as the Christian Western Europe. Christian Western Europe was a religious organization that wanted to unite all of the European countries. Because it was religious, in order to become part of this group, the king of the country had to be Catholic. So, the first official king of Hungary was a Catholic Christian named St. Stephen I. And this group of Magyar tribes became known as a Catholic Apostolic Kingdom. And that was the official title given to a country that became part of this group, or became part of the Christian Western Europe. In nearly all of the thousand years that followed this point in time, war was very common. Hungary enjoyed some years of great power and then some years when they lost that power. They were conquered by other nations and for a while they were ruled and had a union with Austria. During World War I, Hungary and Austria played a major part. Hungary and Austria drafted almost 8 million soldiers during World War I. When the war was over, the union between Austria and Hungary was dissolved and Hungary was forced to sign a treaty where they lost 71% of its land and more than half of its people. And when I say they lost their people, they, didn't, they weren't killed or anything like that. They just lived in parts of the land that were no longer part of Hungary. Hungary lost a lot of the power in the land that it had in years past. After World War II, Hungary came under the control of communist Russia, they were what is now considered a satellite country. In other words, it controlled Hungary from a distance. So Hungary was forced to have a communist government and they remained under that control until the collapse of Russia's government. In 1989, Hungary was finally able to form what is called a parliamentary republic. And that is the type of government that they have today. Hungary today is the 83rd most populous country with about 9 million people living there. Almost all of the people that live there speak Hungarian. The Hungarian language is quite different from many surrounding countries. It's not similar to German, which is interesting because it was part of Austria for a while. It's not similar to Spanish. It's actually most similar to Finnish or Estonian. Folk dance is still practiced and celebrated in Hungary with traditional clothing and music. One popular dance style is called the Stardas. These dances have energetic music, bright, intricate costumes, and a beat that makes the observer want to jump in and join them. They're fun dances to watch and listen to, and if you get the chance, participate in. 
Hospitality and food are a big part of Hungarian culture. That means they pride themselves in taking care of visitors and their ability to feed them well. One of the national dishes of Hungary is a dish called goulash. Now, goulash may not sound very good, but it is quite good. Goulash is a thick soup or a stew with meat, pasta, and vegetables. And paprika is an essential seasoning in the soup. Paprika, which is made from ground red peppers, originated in Hungary. If you look in your kitchen cabinet, you pro your mom probably has a little bit of paprika in there. Most of the people who go to church in Hungary are Christian, or most of the time they're Catholic. The reason for this goes back to the early days of its history when the first kings became a saint or a member of Catholicism. As for the games they love, when it comes to sports, Hungary has always done very well in many of them. Since the world has started doing the Olympic sports, they have kept track of which countries have won the most gold medals over the years. And only seven of them, only seven other countries, have won more Olympic gold medals in Hungary. Soccer is one of the more dominant sports in Hungary. Hungary revolutionized soccer in the 1950s when they developed a new type of strategy that helped them remain undefeated for more than four years and 31 games. And that is a record that to this day has never been broken. A pastime or a fun thing to do for many Hungarians involves sitting in spas. And it is usually not the spa or the hot tub that you might be used to seeing. Hungary has a lot of natural thermal lakes, or in other words, bodies of water, lakes or ponds of some sort, that are heated by the heat from the earth. Some of the early cultures and invaders of Hungary took advantage of this unique feature and they created bathhouses by piping hot water into a large hall for bathing or creating very large pools outside just for the public to come and sit in these large hot tubs. It was very relaxing back then and, it, and is still quite popular today. One other thing that you might find in just about every Hungarian home is a Rubik's Cube. The Rubik's Cube was invented by a Hungarian man named Erno Rubik. This game was invented in 1974 and quickly became popular throughout the world. It won Game of the Year in Germany and has become the best-selling puzzle toy in the entire world. You might have a Rubik's Cube in your own house. Hungary is pretty far north, so that means it's usually pretty cold during the winter. However, the highest part of most of the country is only about 600 feet above sea level. When an area is close to sea level, it usually does not get as cold as other areas that are far north and high above sea level. So although Hungary is pretty far north, it's not quite as cold during the winter time as other areas of, that are about the same latitude. Hungary has done well at transitioning its economy from a centrally planned communist economy to a free market economy. It is a very popular tourist destination and today it is continually striving to make it the great country that its citizens have always believed in.